As the war dragged on in Vietnam, the U.S. Air Force was confronted with a problem and need to create a new aircraft to replace its outdated World War II fighters for close air support. To create a new close air support platform, the Air Force initiated the AX program. After a close contest, Northrop's YA-9-1. The plan was to have the aircraft operational in time to support ground forces in Vietnam to defeat the communists. Significant technological advances were made in military aviation during World War II. Notably the development of strike aircraft specifically intended for close air support, CAS. These aircraft, which included the Republic P-47 Thunderbolt and the Lockheed P-38 Lightning, supported the ground forces by firing heavy artillery from the air. Nevertheless, the U.S. Army Air Force's separation from the other branches of the government in 1947 restricted the kind of fixed-wing aircraft the Army could purchase and build. During the Korean War in 1950, the Douglas Sky Raider served in CAS operations. The U.S. Army made the decision to create the Advanced Aerial Fire Support System, or AFSS, after the Sky Raider program came to an end. This resulted in the creation of the short-lived Lockheed AH-56 Cheyenne attack helicopter, but the Air Force chose to create a new combat support aircraft, CAS, for deployment in Vietnam because they saw it as a danger. The USAF had a difficult time replacing the Douglas Sky Raider in 1966, which prompted the creation of a novel close air support, CAS, design. The lives of troops, Marines and coalition forces fighting in Vietnam were being negatively impacted by the inefficiencies caused by the aging CAS aircraft. General John P. McConnell, the Chief of Staff, understood the value of the Air Force's reputation and the necessity of creating a specialized CAS aircraft equipped with the newest technology advancements. The USAF made many attempts before releasing a Requirements Action Directive R-80 in December 1966 with the goal of creating a CAS aircraft that was equipped with the newest technology advancements. During the Vietnam War, the Air Force's efficiency and safety were greatly dependent on the CAS design. The Requirements Action Directive gave rise to the Attack Experimental Program Office, or AX, in 1967. Its purpose was to create a preferred design for the USAF's initial combat aircraft. Study contracts were given to more than 20 defense firms in order to provide the finest possible designs, armor, weapons, engines, fuel, and equipment. A low-cost aircraft with high ordnance load, minimal maintenance needs, sturdy airframe for pilot survivability, high speed of nearly 400 miles per hour, and limited maneuverability were the desired results. This was vital during the Vietnam War since the North Vietnamese Army and the Viet Cong guerrillas needed to be defeated by the Army and Marines. A defense contractor's first investigations on the AX aircraft project were shelved because of growing tensions with the Soviet Union over Europe. The U.S. and NATO came to the conclusion that in order to strike Soviet tanks and armored vehicles, soldiers stationed at the borders with the USSR would require close air support. The USAF changed the specifications in its first request for proposals to account for this. It now calls for an aircraft with an anticipated cost of around $1.4 million dollars a maximum speed of over 460 miles per hour, a takeoff distance of over 4,000 feet, a range of 285 miles, and a payload of 16,000 pounds. It was also intended for the aircraft to be all-weather and equipped with a cannon that could rip away Soviet armor as it advanced. Considering the effectiveness of the 20mm M61 Vulcan gun, the USAF released a second call for proposals for the main armament of the CAS aircraft. 
The 20mm Vulcan was considered a very effective weapon against most targets, and experienced pilots from a variety of military branches were advised on its performance. But the Vulcan could not penetrate targets with heavier armor, hence a bigger caliber rotary gun was required. The massive 30mm rotary gun required for the AX aircraft was capable of firing more than 4,000 rounds per minute. The 30mm cannon was designed exclusively by Philco Ford and General Electric. The prototype was given the designation GAU-8 in the middle of 1971. Four types of ammunition were to be developed, according to the USAF, semi-armor piercing high explosive rounds, high explosive incendiary rounds, and armor piercing incendiary target practice. By 1974, the formidable weapon was prepared for battle. The U.S. Air Force received bids from six companies, however, only Northrop and Fairchild Republic were chosen to proceed with the development of prototypes for the YA-9A and YA-10A. The YA-9 from Northrop was a traditional design, with an oversized monoplane with chemically milled skins, honeycomb structures, and straight wings placed on the shoulder. It was constructed entirely of riveted aluminum alloy. The United States created the YA-9, with plenty of room for underwing armament storage and fuel requirements. The aircraft was built by Northrop engineers with the intention of shielding combustible items from sources of ignition and minimizing direct damage during battle. A key component of the wing design for the CAS function was greater control at lower altitudes. With a nose cone assembly and a bubble-style canopy for visibility, the cockpit was situated aft. The prototype was made of aluminum armor, but if production were to be authorized, titanium armor was planned. All of the controls were typical for the period. A manual backup mechanism was included in the twin hydraulic flight control system of the prototype YA-9 aircraft to prevent control failure. The aircraft was propelled by Lycoming YF-102, LD-100 turbofan engines, each capable of producing 7,500 pounds of thrust and reaching a top speed of more than 520 miles per hour. The engines had a 5,000 feet per minute climb rate and were based on the Avro Lycoming T-55 turboshaft. The prototype had a single vertical tail fin with upward tilted horizontal planes and a sizable cruciform stabilizer for low-level flying. With its primary legs below the prototype center mass, the YA-9 aircraft had split ailerons in its wings for air brakes and sideways control forces. It was equipped with 10 underwing hardpoints to store up to 16,000 pounds of weaponry, including Maverick air-to-ground missiles for the CAS role, and a smaller 20mm M61 Vulcan gun in place of the 30mm GAU-8 cannon. Weapon pointing was made possible by the aircraft's nose leg beneath the cockpit and low-clearance undercarriage. On May 30, 1972, Northrop YA-9's first prototype took to the air, and in August, another one did the same. The plane handled like a fighter and felt great, according to test pilots. Tests were conducted at Edwards Air Force Base in California on the Northrop YA-9 and the Fairchild Republic YA-10. Even though the YA-10 satiated U.S. Air Force criteria, its distinct design and externally mounted nacelles made it more survivable and less noticeable to ground-based trackers. This is why the aircraft was selected for production. Moreover, during low-altitude strikes, the high-mounted engines kept debris out of the intake apertures. Before they were declared formally decommissioned, NASA received the two YA-9 prototypes for testing. What do you think? If went into production, would it have been as successful as a tin warthog, or better or worse than it? Share your thoughts in the comments.